Hi, how Hi. are you? I'm doing awesome. <laughs> so how much does one have to hate Thanksgiving <laughs> to make a horror movie about it? I feel like when you love something, that's when you make a horror movie about it. Um, and as you may have heard, uh, growing up in Massachusetts, Thanksgiving oh. is such a huge deal. <laughs> there's school plays, there's two separate pilgrim recreation villages oh, wow. you visit as kids, there's the parade. <laughs> so every holiday had a slasher film except Thanksgiving, which was like the most obvious one dot. So it wasn't even a hatred of the holiday. It's actually my favorite holiday. <laughs> but the Black Friday sales have completely perverted it. And that's when we thought, okay, now we have an interesting horror movie. It's not just a basic slasher film. You have that theme of the kind of Christmas commercialization that is bled over. So we're all sitting around and saying how thankful we are and then running out and trampling over each other for waffle <laughs> irons. That's yeah. where when you have that kind of theme, you have fertile ground for a horror film. Absolutely. And you did it very well. But this one was a little campier than some of your other horror movies. Why? I really wanted to decapitate someone in a turkey costume at a parade and see if they run around like a turkey with their head cut off. And you're laughing. You can't just, you can't decapitate a mascot at a parade and not just laugh. It's just like Monty Python ridiculous. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, for this one, I can make it scary, but I want to make it fun. It's just the tone of the movie. It's not silly. It's, a, it's just slightly left of center. Like just, yeah. it's just crazy enough that it's just unrealistic enough you can enjoy the violence. I felt like I didn't want like a punishing, grueling, I've done the endurance test yeah. horror movie. I did it with Hostel. Hostel yeah. 2 especially was like, I look at that now and it's a very like dark, bleak movie, which yeah. I'm very proud of, but I didn't want that. I wanted something that was like Scream or Final Destination where people just go to the theaters and they laugh as much as they're screaming. Yeah, and we definitely did laugh at a few scenes. But never never being a comedy. I always right. wanted to like stay within the confines of we are in a slasher movie, yeah. even if the deaths are just a little bit nuts. Well, then you'll be happy to know that even though I don't like horror movies and I'm not a big fan of the gore and everything, I have never felt so nauseous in my entire life as when they were carving the turkey. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's quite the compliment so because I always worry I didn't go far enough. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> I blew it. I should have made yeah. this more gross. Like, I swear, I sit there, and then, then so hearing you say that you yeah. almost, like, yeah. first of all, the highest compliment you can get making a horror movie is one, I threw up, <laughs> and the second, the other one is, I couldn't watch it. When people, if I do my job, all the production design, all the beautiful photography, all the gore, the highest compliment is I saw it through the cracks of my fingers. So if you're watching that, it means I've done my job. Yeah, I literally thought I was gonna be ill at that scene. Oh, I wish you had, we could have, because now with social media, you can get viral videos. So anyone at home, if you throw up, don't waste it. Film it. <laughs> Post it. Well, and that's part of this whole film, too, is because, you know, the old trailer that was in Grindhouse was set further back. Yeah. yeah. But you really needed that social media element, I think, to really make this a feature film. Yes. Did you feel that way about Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Well, you know, we looked at a lot of horror movies. We'll set it in the past to not have to deal with cell phones. Mm. But there's something about, you know, these tragedies and tramplings that someone wants to get the YouTube views from it. So incorporating that level of greed and why the kids get punished, you know, there's this trampling, instead of saving people, the kids are quick, let me post it on my YouTube. <laughs> so that's the video that goes viral. So I like incorporating modern technology into a slasher film. And that was Jeff Randell, mm -hmm. my fellow Newton, you know, co-writer. Yeah. He spent he spent 16 years in the script, spent a long time on the script working it out. How could we do it? How could we make, how could a killer rampage through a town? How would, how would you trace the signal? Figuring all of that stuff out. So, but we did it. You know, I didn't want it to be a lazy slasher film. I wanted it to be a well-written movie with really contemporary characters. So how hard did you have to campaign for People Magazine to make Patrick Dempsey the sexiest man alive? I was campaigning for Rick Hoffman to be sexiest <laughs> man alive. They didn't listen to me. They gave it to my co-star Patrick. There's going to be such tension on set. My goodness, I can't even imagine if we get to do Thanksgiving 2 Black Friday coming to theaters uh -oh. 2024, then what that tension's going to be like. It's going to be a lot of heat. It's going to be like, you know, a supernova. Yeah. yeah, well, at least you can say the sexiest man alive was in my movie. There you yeah, go. it's true. He's very, yeah. very sexy. I, I would, now if he sits in a chair, it'll be the sexiest chair ever. If he uses a fork, it'll be, that's the sexiest fork. Patrick, you need to incorporate uh, you know, I'm going to direct it. Patrick, it just, can you do that again? This just wasn't sexy enough. I just wasn't, make it more sexy, Patrick.